We're on, Kimberly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kimberly Craig. I'm the president and CEO of the Monterey County Business Council. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are pleased to partner with the Small Business Development Center, also known as the SBDC, to offer these time-sensitive topics to you via webinar. The Monterey County Business Council is a membership-based organization that works together with private business, the public sector, and nonprofit organizations. We're always looking to expand our network, so if you think we're doing good work, we'd love to have you as a member. You can find a membership application on our website, which is www.mcbc.biz. MCBC and the Small Business Development Center have been offering free webinars on small business solutions during the pandemic, and we'll let you know of upcoming discussions on opportunities and timely updates that affect you. I do wanna thank our partners, the SBDC, the City of Salinas, and the County of Monterey, the US Small Business Administration, and the California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. Additionally, I wanna give a shout out to Luis Alvarez of Alvarez Technology Group. The team over there is producing our webinar today. I do wanna encourage you to ask as many questions as you want. To do that, please use the raise hand feature of Zoom and we will answer questions at the end during Q&A. We are also recording this webinar and we'll send you a link with the recording so you can review today's class. We'll also send out the contact information for our speakers today. Just wanna go over the agenda very briefly. Um, we will start with Cindy Merzon, the Director of Cal Coastal Small Business Development Center. She'll be doing an overview of services. And then we'll be doing an update on the Paycheck Protection Program with Andy Sito, the Lender Relations Specialist for the US Small Business Administration. Then we'll be going on to our local lenders, asking your national bank, William Bill Tebby, Senior Vice President and Relationship Manager for Bank of America, and then asking your local bank, Jennifer Kuyper, Senior Vice President and Senior Relationship Manager at Pacific Valley Bank. So with that, uh, and, and then we will be ending with question and answers. So with that, I'd like to introduce Cindy Merzon, Director of Cal Coastal Small Business Development Center. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Kimberly. And I need to share my screen. And interesting. Sorry, technical difficulties here. Um, here we go. All right. Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Cindy Merzon with the uh, Small Business Development Center located at Cal Coastal. We're pleased to partner with the Monterey County Business Council for this webinar and we're delighted to have our guest speakers, but more importantly, we're also delighted to have you join us this morning. The SBDC network is made up of over a thousand independent centers across the United States, Puerto Rico and Guam. And as part of that network, Cal Coastal SBDC serves small businesses in Monterey and San Benito counties. And we do that with no fee, one-on-one -on -one business advising, training, and access to information and resources to help businesses start, grow, and succeed. We haven't let COVID-19 stop us. We've just gone virtual with our service delivery. You can attend training virtually like today, and you can access many, many training opportunities by going to our website, Calendar. And, we, and you can work with our expert consultants over the phone, via video conference, and email. We offer we were able to offer no fee services to you because of the financial support that we received from federal, state, and local partners, including the US Small Business Administration, the California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, the City of Salinas, San Benito County, and the Community Foundation of Monterey County. And like our co-sponsors today, Monterey County Business Council, we work together with other local small business resources to offer wraparound services to meet your needs. So in other words, if we can't help you, we can connect you with someone who can. Uh, you can connect with our consultants by a couple of ways. If you're already an SBDC client, you can contact your consultant directly and they can help you. If you wanna be a client, you can register at http forward slash forward slash casbdc.biz forward slash cc sign up. You'll receive a link to choose the best day and time for your first appointment. It's important for you to remember we are receiving lots of inquiries right now. So we look forward to working with you at our earliest available appointment. 
I'll put our contact information and the registration links in the chat box so that you can click on those directly. There are many links provided in this next presentation, too many to add to the chat box. So what we'll do is send them out after the event so you can there they will be clickable for you. You don't have to hurry and write them down. So as an SBA resource partner, I am pleased to introduce our next speaker, Andy Cito, Lender Relations Specialist with the US Small Business Administration. Thank you so much for joining us today, Andy. Hi, thank you, Cindy. Good morning to all of you attending this webinar. Uh, you know, it takes a, a great amount of uh, resources to help us through this pandemic that we're going through right now with COVID-19. That's affecting all of our small business communities out here, our nonprofit entities as well. Um, so, you know, when, when they say it takes a village to do things, right? It, this is one of those things that happens that uh, we're all banding together. Uh, we're trying to get the resources that are available out there to you, not only from our resource partners like the SBDC, uh, Monterey Business Council, Monterey County Business Council, and some of the state governments, but the federal government, but then you know, a huge, a huge thank you to our lending partners that are on there and which some of them are going to be on this webinar as well. But our lending partners play a very tremendous, big amount of gratitude for them to participating in these PPP programs and getting the, the access to capital out to these businesses. So um, I'm glad to be here to talk about the relaunch of the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, under the Economic Aid Act of 2021. Uh, we're gonna be calling this the PPP Round Two. So th that'll be referenced in quite a bit of these slides coming forward. So we're gonna go ahead and go forward. So this round here, Round Two of the Economic Aid Act, it was basically intended to try to increase more funds to our hardest hit small businesses, uh, whether it be in, <clears throat> they'd be in lower income communities, or disadvantaged type business situations. Um, it was set up originally to help those small businesses with these programs that have been reacted, reactivated. Um, and then using all the resources that are available through the SBA guarantee programs, our resource partners and our lending partners. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So the dates that started, January 11th was the start date of the PPP round two. Um, and it was only open for our community financial institutions. So these were our, our institutions that uh, were either smaller institutions or they had a uh, community focus um, that was identified through the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC and the Treasury. Um, so allowing those entities and their customers and their clients being able to apply for the PPP first at the beginning of the rounds when it opened in January 11th. And this allowed also for first round draws. Um, originally it talked about doing second draw, but uh, there was enough funds that were allocated through Congress with the act that allowed the SBA to provide applicants that did not receive first round draws uh, on the PPP program to also apply for it during this time. Then when January 13th came around, the, the smaller community banks were also allowed to uh, start accepting and submitting second draw PPP loans. And these were PPP loans for businesses that had received the first round of PPP loans. Then January 15th, we up staged again, moved up to the next notch to the other lenders that were uh, $1 billion in assets or less. And then January 19th, that's when everything opened up for all of our lending partners um, to be able to start submitting those first and second draw applications into the system. This is a very important date here. March 31 is the last day that a lender can submit a PPP application first and second draw. So keep that in mind as if you're trying to seek the available resources to get funding for your business under this PPP program, March 31 is the last date at this time. Okay. Next slide, please. So what's considered a first draw PPP loan? So this is for any eligible applicant that did not receive a PPP loan prior to August 9th, 2020. So the first round expired on August the 8th, actually. 
Um, so that's when the date was that it expired for the first round. So, but this is saying that anything, anyone that did not receive one prior to August the 9th, you could be eligible for this first draw PPP loan now under the Economic Aid Act. Uh, there are some eligibility criteria that you have to meet. Um, it's not just uh, for everyone that's out there. Uh, so there are some eligibility things, but th there were some expanded entities that were included in this Economic Aid Act. Um, so, and then also there were some additional eligible expenses that were included in, in this round as well. So we'll go over some of these coming forward. Uh, one of the th other changes that came across under PPP originally when on the first round, it was either you chose at the very beginning, you only had an eight week cover period to utilize. Um, then when the flexibility act was ca came into play uh, about a couple months later, um, it allowed you to get a 24 week covered period for you to utilize all the PPP funds. Now with the Economic Aid Act, uh, you can choose anywhere between eight and 24 weeks for your covered period. So that helps a lot of the small businesses because <clears throat> what happened was at the first round was that um, when you did your forgiveness application, you either had to choose eight weeks or 24 weeks as your covered period to make your calculations. So in, in the majority of the cases, uh, if you elected to go the 24 weeks because you couldn't utilize all of your PPP funds in eight weeks, but you were able to utilize it in like the 15th week, you had to wait 24 weeks to submit that forgiveness application. You had to do your calculations based off of the 24 week covered period. So this gives a little bit more flexibilities for those businesses that are using, uh, don't have to go that, that full 24 weeks and they used up the funds in that 15th week and they wanna go forward. In addition, there were some changes in this Economic Aid Act to certain borrowers that may request an increase to their original PPP loan amount. Um, so we'll go over that a little bit here. And then we talked about that, that cut date there. So keep that in mind. So some of the new eligible expenses that came out, um, oh, go ahead and go back, Cindy. Uh, some of the new eligible expenses that came out previously, it did already include like mortgage interest and loan interest payments that, you're, that you had in your business. Key thing on that is you had to have these mortgages or loans before February 15th of 2020. So they had to have been in place already, as well as rent and utilities. So those contracted things or things that you've gotten into, they had to have been in place prior to February 15th, 2020 to be eligible for you to utilize the PPP funds. Um, so it does include that mortgage and just loan payments, lease payments, rent, utilities, things like that. Um, new things that were added on to this was that uh, there are worker protection costs related to COVID-19 now. So you can use some of the proceeds to take care of those expenses. Um, uninsured property damage costs caused by looting or vandalism during 2020 and certain supplier costs and expenses for operations. So there were some a little bit expanded items that you can use that uh, up to 40% non-payroll costs for. Okay. And that is still the same, uh, where it is 60% uh, of the loan proceeds have to be used for payroll purposes. So uh, cash compensation of employees and owners capped at $100,000. So when you do your calculations, if anyone makes over $100,000, you want to make sure you cap their portion at $100,000. Do not include anything over $100,000. And then up to 40% maximum on non-payroll eligible business expenses. Okay. Um, some things that came up during the first round, some folks were using these funds to pay off loans. That is not eligible. Okay. It can be only used to make the monthly interest payments on those obligations. You cannot use it to refinance outstanding debt obligations. Okay. So that's very important. That could be the difference between you being able to get full forgiveness or partial forgiveness. Okay. The other things that come up is uh, partnerships, um, that uh, the part uh, that you can request for an increase. If you're a partnership in the first round that you received the first draw PPP loan, and during that time, um, it wasn't clear whether the general partners could be included as an employee, so the majority of the applications came in uh, that did not cover the general partnership 
um, wages. So now it does. Um, so you can go back to your PPP lender and ask for an increase on that first draw loan to utilize for your general partner compensation. Same thing counts there, you're capped at $100,000. So if you're making $500,000 uh, as a general partner, you're only gonna be able to, to use calculations of $100,000. You have to reduce it down. Okay. Um, same thing goes for seasonal employers. Seasonal employers can request for an increase. Um, and it's, there's, there's certain requirements on how they calculate it, but basically they're looking you can use an average total monthly payments for payroll for any 12 week period selected by a seasonal employer beginning February 15, 2019 and ending February 15, 2020. Okay, so that gives a little bit more flexibilities for those seasonal employers as well. <clears throat> uh, there are a couple other ones. So if there were any eligible borrowers during the first round or the first draw, that fully repaid a PPP loan prior to December 27, 2020, you can submit a reapplication to the PPP lender. And it's probably best to go back to possibly the PPP lender that originally approved you because if they're your banking relationship, uh, that's the best way to go and they may have your documentation available still. So they can go back and pull their loan file and, and just use the information that you've already provided except for the new applications you have to submit in there now. Okay. <clears throat> Borrowers that return part of a first draw PPP loan prior before December 27, 2020. Um, if SBA has not remitted a forgiveness payment to the lender, uh, you can go back to that lender and ask them to fund whatever amount you prepaid. So there's a potential for you to do that. So as long as SBA has not provided any forgiveness payments to the lender, uh, you're gonna be able to go back to that lender and get the whatever amount you prepaid in advance and try to get that money back. Okay, next slide please. So the added uh, entities that were put into this economic aid act was uh, are basically housing cooperatives, destination marketing organization organizations, um, certain 501c6 organizations such as cha chambers of commerce, and eligible news organizations. So the, the big one here is especially the 501c6 organizations because in the first round it didn't allow those nonprofits to be able to apply for PPP. But uh, now you're, those nonprofits are able to now. So that is going to open it up quite a bit and assist those nonprofits as much as possible. Uh, still eligible, of course, are the business entities such as partnerships, corporations, LLCs, sole proprietors, independent contractors, self employed individuals, the 501c3s, the 501c19 veterans organizations, and tribal businesses. Um, just one of the notes on the 501c6 organizations. So under this program, it does exclude professional sports leagues and organizations with the purpose of promoting or participating in a political campaign or other activity. Okay, So if you want to look this up, uh, you can go on the SBA.gov website and see if you would be eligible by some of the information that's on there. Next slide, please. Okay. Under this Economic Aid Act of 2021, it came up with a second draw opportunity for our first draw borrowers that uh, are out there. The key components to this second draw program, you have to have employees of 300 or less. Okay? In addition, you have to show that you suffered a 25% reduction in gross receipts. So most borrowers, the maximum loan amount of a second draw PPP loan is 2.5 time times the average monthly 2019 or 2020 payroll costs up to $2 million. So it is capped at $2 million this round, where previously it was up to $10 million. Um, so the factor is still the same, the 2.5, that did not change for the majority of the P PPP borrowers. Um, where it does change and will help probably the most impacted industries that are out there is the accommodation and food services sector. As we all know, Monterey County area, um, there's quite a bit of tourism there, a lot of hotel motels, a lot of food services sector. So 
Under these industries, if you have an NAICS code of 72, beginning with a 72, you can use a 3.5 times factor to determine your loan amount, still capped at $2 million though. So it, this increased factor will give some additional funding for those industries in that sector there. Okay, there is a different application for the second draw. So you wanna make sure that you're using the right application when you're submitting it, or if your lender is using an online portal, making sure they have the right application as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so you wanna make sure you're using this 2483 SD. So SD standing for second draw. So making sure you have the right application there. Next slide, please. Okay, to be eligible for the second draw, you must have previously received a first draw PPP loan. Okay, the other thing is, if you received a first draw loan, you had to have used all the loan funds up. Okay, so if you submit an application to a lender for a second draw loan and the, it, the loan gets approved, you, the lender will not fund that second draw loan out until they have verified with you, the business owner, that you have fully utilized the first draw on eligible expenses, okay? So make sure that you, you have that completed prior to getting those funds dispersed out there. Again, can't have more than more than 300 employees. Now, keep in mind too, for that, uh, in the NAICS codes for 72 for accommodations and um, food industry. Um, on those, if you have multiple locations under your corporation and you have separate EIN numbers, those separate locations can be treated separately and you can submit a separate application for those locations. So the employee number count can be based on that separate application. Okay, so keep that in mind. And the most important part of the second draw is to make sure you show that there's a 25% reduction in gross receipts. <clears throat> and the reduction, you do have to show comparable quarters. So when you're providing the documentation, you're making the comparisons, those comparisons must be based on a calendar quarter, okay? So if you're using quarter one of 2019, you have to use quarter one in 2020 to make the comparisons. You can't say quarter one 2019 and use quarter two of 2020, because that's not the comparable quarters. Okay. Um, the other thing for the lenders, um, lenders, you want to make sure that the, the PPP recipients, borrowers, don't have overlapping covered periods. Okay, So if they haven't utilized the first draw funds yet, you want to make sure you don't fund on the second draw until they fully utilized it and show that they've used it for the intended purposes. And then you can fund on the second draw when that's done because you don't want to have overlapping covered periods. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, well, some things that came up with the Economic Aid Act 2021 on loan forgiveness. For those of you that were lucky to receive the idle advances, um, what would happen when forgiveness came around, there was a situation that came up that if you received an idle advance, that's the amount of up to $10,000 that you got uh, for $1,000 per employee capped at 10. Um, if you're going to get a PPP forgiveness, the idle advance amount no longer was forgiven. And what they did was they were going to reduce that amount and then that would be the loan balance remaining on the PPP that you would have to repay back to the PPP lender. So under this Economic Aid Act, that eliminated that or rescinded it and now is no longer deducted from the forgiveness payment and will be part of the forgiveness now. Um, some of the other things that came out that will help a lot of our small businesses as well. Uh, the loans that are forgiven, the amount that's forgiven is no longer taxable income. Um, and then the expenses that were utilized and paid under the PPP loan funds are now tax deductible. But you always want to consult either the IRS website and get that information or your tax professional uh, to make sure that you're following and doing the appropriate accounting scenarios there. Expanded forgivable expenses are permissible for any PPP loan not already forgiven. And then coming soon, uh, as many of 
you, either the PPP borrowers and our lending community were all waiting for. Uh, there's going to be a simplified forgiveness application for PPP loans of 150,000 and under. So that should be coming out soon. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is just some of the forms. Um, you can go to the sb.gov website forward slash PPP and you can make sure you get the right forms here. Uh, for the first draw, if you're applying for first draw, or if you're applying for the second draw, making sure you utilize those things. And then all the interim final rules, the FAQs, how to calculate the loans, all that good stuff is all on this website, so you can utilize that as well. Not only being able to take a look at that, but because you, know, you can always use our small business development centers as our resource partners to assist you as well. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and these are just websites to uh, get you to what you're looking for as well. So just some additional websites there. Next slide. Okay, some of the things that are gonna be coming up. Um, the economic injury disaster loan. If you did not receive that in the first round prior to December 31, um, 2020, it expired at that time, uh, Economic Aid Act, expanded the expiration date to now December 31, 2021. So if you did not receive an economic injury disaster loan for COVID-19, you can feel free to go onto the SBA website and apply for that loan now. And that's an SBA direct loan. It is a loan, it is not a grant. It's not part of the PPP forgiveness process. So you do have to repay that back to the SBA. But as you can see here, it does have favorable rates and terms to pay it back with. Uh, so that should help our small businesses as they recover. Um, one key thing here on this idle advance it has been reinstituted again. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be, and what it says here, it's targeted. So this is going to be staged between businesses that need it the most. And it's gonna be targeted first for businesses that are located in low income communities. Um, so if you did not receive or you did receive a partial of that idle advance the first time around, you will be contacted directly by SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance and they will let you know the amount that they would be looking at to advance this additional grant to you. Um, just to make sure that <clears throat> you're getting the right email and the, it's coming from the right person. Um, the email address that you'll get is should end with an at sba.gov. So usually it'll have either an individual's first and last name with a dot in between, or it's gonna have a department heading and it's gonna be at sba.gov. So if you want <clears throat> to make sure you've got the right email and not opening some sort of spam or something like that, that's one of the key signs there. The other thing that's gonna be coming up is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. It's not currently available, but it should be coming up soon. Um, and you can check the West SBA website for eligibility purposes on that. And then when the portal's gonna be opening with that, that too is also an SBA direct loan or grant that you would apply as directly from the SBA. So not through our lending community partners. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, so if you are having difficulties as a business owner trying to find a PPP lender, uh, whether it's from your existing banking relationship or whatever the case might be that they can't assist you, um, you can go on the SBA website and go to a program called Lender Match. Lender Match, you can fill out a profile and it'll ask you exactly what you're looking for. And this could potentially match you up with the lender anywhere throughout the country, okay? So now if you're, whatever reasons you can't get a PPP lender to assist you, rather that either, you know, not just because you're not in, you're not eligible for the program, um, then you can try lender match and see if you can get a, a connection with the lender anywhere throughout the country with that program, okay? And then, of course, finding local assistance or our resource partners to assist you. So if you need some additional assistance with the application process or if you're not quite sure what documentation you need to put together, you can definitely contact our resource partners and they would uh, be able to assist you with that information there as well. And then of course, there's our, our one of our 
great resource partners, the Cal Coastal SBDC and their contact information there. So feel free to contact them and they'll get back to you virtually, of course, uh, because no one's meeting in person right now at this time. Okay, Cindy, do you have anything else to add, Cindy? Yes, I was just going to add that um, we have a, a quick poll, Lewis, if you wouldn't mind putting that up. We want to see if you're what topic you might be interested in on in future that cover the areas that Andy just went over. So if you could choose one or all or however many you're interested in seeing a, a webinar on, please let us know. We'll just give that a few more minutes and then uh, we'll go on to our next, sorry, maybe not minutes, that's a really long time. <laughs> Probably another 30 seconds or so, uh, just to um, answer a very simple poll to make sure that we're providing you with information in these upcoming webinars that, you, that are pertinent to you. Um, so maybe 10 more seconds, going once, going twice, and then uh, we'll go ahead and um, go on to our next speaker. Oh, look at that. That's fun. Okay. Good job. All right. State and local financial aid resources. Noted. All right. Well, we'll be working on that in the upcoming weeks. So um, keep an eye out for that as we send out updates um, on what our future topics on our webinars are. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce William, as everyone knows him as Bill Tebby. Uh, he's the Senior Vice President and Relationship Manager of Bank of America. Bill has a lifelong career in finance, and we're very grateful that he's here to join us today. I know um, we're all doing zoom ons and so very much appreciate your time today, Bill, and please share with us what B of A is doing with the PPP loan. Welcome. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, again, my name is Bill Tebby. Um, I'm a senior vice president, senior relationship manager at Bank of America. And uh, in my spare time, I act as uh, in a role as a market president for the, the Tri-County area here. Um, uh, Kimberly mentioned that I lifelong role in banking. Well, it was close, but I spent the, uh, I, had a, I, I had a bit of a different career start. I spent seven years working in the livestock industry in a fairly large feedlot in the Central Valley. Played cowboy for seven years. So it's a, a strange change into banking. But thank you again. Um, as the rest of you, I'm getting really used to these virtual meetings. Um, the one good thing is that uh, I'm getting really good at my uh, technology and digital skills. They've really improved. Um, as I will talk about a little bit as we go through this, the application with Bank of America is uh, completely digital. Uh, there's no paperwork other than what you have to upload into our systems. Um, everything, you just type in the information. Um, I, looked at, uh, I looked at the applications uh, yesterday, both for the first time applicant, as well as those applying for the second time. And the process seems to flow really well. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, they direct you, depending on how a question may be answered, in, in, in the proper directions as to how you should apply. Um, one thing I, I, that I would say is that we're, we, see, we Andy probably sees this also, is we see almost daily changes to the process uh, so far. Um, mainly we wanna make sure our clients qualify and apply for what they need. Uh, as with other banks and lenders, B of A is working to implement uh, the program in accordance with government requirements which Andy just discussed and did very well. Thank you very much. Just for background, uh, B of A in the first, we call it, we look at it as the first two, the first two uh, rounds, Bank of America distributed $26 billion of PPP loans. This went out to 345,000 applicants or clients. 99% of those um, had less than 100 employees and I can't remember the exact number, but it was between 85 and 89% of that number, of the total number, uh, were to clients who had less than 10 employees. So the money truly went to, to the smaller businesses. 
at least with our, our, our uh, clients. Um, the other comment is so far, we do not see the mad rush that we had in the first uh, two rounds. Um, for us, it has been, I've checked with our, my small business uh, cohorts and also checked uh, regionally here on the Pacific Southwest and, and it all seems to be the same. We are seeing activity, but it is not to the same extent to the, uh, the same rush as we saw the first time. I think so far we've funded about, a, I think I saw a number, not funded, but we have received applications in the, uh, for about a billion three so far. So our application, as I mentioned earlier, is a digital application process uh, that clearly describes and follows all the requirements um, in line with the SBA application. The questions, uh, calculations, certifications are the same. We just use, as I mentioned earlier, a digital format. As with the first round, uh, we ask and recommend that clients review and become familiar with the SBA and Treasury website. And that they all, they, these websites really describe the programs uh, in detail. And if you still need assistance or have questions, um, discuss them with your uh, financial uh, experts, your CPA, maybe a legal expert. Um, th they are, those are the places to go to answer the questions specifically about um, answering some of the questions. Um, again, our process is digital for either one. Uh, and the way that we do that we, is that we use one of the two, one or of the two online banking platforms that we have. So depending on where you, where you are banking within the organization, first one is called Cash Pro, and that is designed for the medium sized and larger sized businesses. And uh, the second is called Business Advantage 360, which is designed for smaller businesses. Um, clients that already use uh, one of these platforms uh, we have begun notifying those that are qualified to reapply, um, you know, that maybe had already had an application in and were in process and past the process where they're now able to uh, reapply for the second time. Uh, and they would see those notifications in either Cash Pro or the uh, small business. If uh, someone does not have access at this point, all they need to do is reach out to one of the relationship managers in their in their area, and we will obtain a temporary um, license and temp give them temporary access to the uh, platforms to go ahead and make the applications. In terms of the applications themselves and who uh, we are accepting right now, it is similar to our first time around. Uh, two components to that. One, uh, the applicant needs to have a business deposit account with us and a credit relationship. Secondly, the second piece to that is one business deposit account and no credit relationship or borrowing relationship with another lender. We suggest that the clients who have uh, borrowing relationships with other lenders to use that other lender as their uh, source for the PPP. And also, if and I think Andy mentioned this earlier, if a client applied and received a PPP funding from another bank, they should go ahead and use uh, that other that bank for uh, this uh, this round of, of funding. Um, the initial application, uh, the applicant will have to attest to a couple of different, several different things as they go through it. But first off, uh, the, one of the questions is asked if they've received a prior PPP loan, and that. The answer to that then allows him to go one of two different directions in terms of the application. The other thing that they uh, that, that they have to attest to, and I, it's kind of interesting, is that the owner or directors are not an officer of Bank of America, so we're not lending money to ourselves. Um, as part of the application, uh, we provide a reference sheet uh, with the required documents that they will need to, to have. Uh, we also provide our digital, digital uh, version of how to upload that. And the application form, the SBA application form is, is uh, very similar to what we're, it's almost word for word. We just have it in a digital form. The other thing that we use is a, uh, it's referred to as the Bank of America loan amount worksheet. 
And we use that to confirm uh, the calculations. Um, we found that to be very helpful the first time around uh, when we had a PPP program. Um, as with the SBA handwritten documents or application, they have to respond to a series of questions about the business. The other, the other uh, information we need is if uh, the person who is completing the application online um, is, has the authorization to sign a note. And if they do, we, we gather some information about that person, make sure we have everything lined up in terms of uh, their authority levels so that we can, we can get a note out for their signature. If that person is not authorized, we will collect uh, information about the person who is authorized. And again, it's all about trying to make sure the note is correct and making sure that we have the information that we need. Um, as the, the, the applications go through the process, we keep the, uh, keep the client informed digitally. Uh, they, they will see notes when they open up their uh, online banking platform. There will be notes to, to check if we need more information or if there were questions. So we keep them pretty well informed uh, in doing that. Once the application uh, or the client completes the application and they upload everything to us, uh, the process is we have a, it goes immediately to a person who will review the documents to make sure everything is there. They make sure and cross check that the documents um, have the, the in, in the dollar amounts cross check, go through the calculation. If everything looks complete and, and ready, they will pass it on to a second person who actually takes, takes a more close look, if you will, and then puts it together and, and is pushed on to SBA. If the initial reviewer has some questions or the client didn't upload exactly the right information or didn't complete it correctly, we'll go back directly to them and ask the questions or ask them to uh, um, send some additional information. So it's, it's still a pretty straightforward. We do, we're pretty quick on looking at the information this time around. Um, and everything is submitted to SBA electronically. At, at the, Halfway through the, the per process last year, we had so many applications. I, they had to create a, a conduit into, into SBA so that we, I think we uploaded um, Sunday night close to 50,000 applications. Um, so they, they've got that pretty well figured out at this point. Um, lastly, requests for loan amounts equal to or less than what the worksheet says. Those loans will be expedited and pretty easy to do. And, and I think Andy, uh, Andy referenced uh, that we apply for a larger amount on their first round. And if there is an application or if they're asking for more than what the uh, calculation would indicate, those will take a little longer to do and ask for a little bit more uh, um, information. So that's about goes through the process that we have and hope, uh, hopefully give you an idea of what, what we are doing. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions and yeah, appreciate the time. Thank you. Back to you, Kimberly. Excellent. Thanks so much, Bill. Really appreciate your time for being here today. And now we have uh, our local bank, Pacific Valley Bank, Miss Jennifer Kuiper, the Senior Vice President and Senior Relationship Manager there at Pacific Valley to talk about local lending from a community bank. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Kimberly, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody on the call today for their contributions to our local business community in light of these truly unprecedented times. I understand um, the struggle that our businesses are facing, and I see that every day as we um, are in the trenches face to face with these businesses who desperately need the, the money that the Economic Aid Act afforded them that, it, that are attempting, attempted, attempting to being channeled into the pockets of businesses via the SBA. So I can share with you um, when the first round of PPP funding came through last year, um, Pacific Valley Bank determined the need of not just our own clientele, but the clientele of the Monterey community. We're such a hospitality driven community in the, on the peninsula. We have a strong ag community, of course, in Salinas. 
um, but the um, fear and the desperation were palatable. And so I'm very proud with the way that um, Pacific Valley Bank responded um, in light of those circumstances. As a small bank where decisions are made locally, we were able to redeploy our human assets as needed to respond to the workflow of the volume of applications that we were taking. So we took what we made locally in round one, 465 um, payroll protection loans, um, deploying approximately $82 million in assets into the pockets of local businesses. Something we're pretty honored about is the fact that we were able to open our doors. I know it's not as simple for larger institutions that are under the um, scrutiny of um, um, regulations to um, respond rapidly and to open their doors to um, businesses that or individuals that were, were non-clients. 63% uh, of our first round were to non-clients, um, which likely saved 3,000 jobs and helped businesses stay in business. Um, as we looked into 2021 and the new round of applications, we were relieved to understand that our hospitality related businesses, specifically restaurants and accommodations, could obtain a larger dollar amount. Um, some of the challenges that we faced have, have been to um, address the SBA systems rollouts. Um, the SBA did roll out a new system that the banks um, were required to understand and respond to, to help as many people as possible. I would say I have a 10 to 15% application failure rate as a result of some of these glitches. We are working through them. Um, our application process is also digital. Um, however, there are a team of local relationship managers who are available to address specific questions of our business community. I, I want to um, applaud the entire lending community. I know that our team and the teams of other community banks as well, but I, I can definitely speak to our team. We were working um, seven hour days nearly around the, or excuse me, seven days a week, nearly around the clock to try to help as many businesses as we could. Our rationale was if we could just help one more business, get one more application through, we're committed and we're in, we're all in with the community to get these funds in the pockets where they're intended to be of small, small business. Um, Pacific Valley Bank was founded in 2004. And as of um, fiscal year ending 2019, we had 351 million in assets. So clearly we're a smaller institution um, and under the leadership of Anchor Fano, local um, family and um, individual, we have um, been able to respond rapidly to meet the demands of our, our community. And if anybody has questions or issues or is having difficulty submitting the application, they can always feel free to contact any one of our local branches in King City Salinas um, or um, here in downtown Monterey. And again, thank you everyone on this call, Bill, Andy, Cindy, uh, Kimberly, Luis, and Zoe, all of you for your advocacy for business. And those of you who are on the line who are small business, Thank you for hanging in there and thank you for the way that you contribute to our local community. Um, with that, I'll wrap up and thank, thank you, Kimberly. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Really appreciate your time today as well. I know we're all busy. I, I think um, Andy Sito had mentioned that he this was his fifth Zoom webinar on the PPP loans this week. So um, certainly recognize that we don't want to do a duplication of efforts, but we felt like uh, it was important to make sure that we had local lenders on our webinar, which made it uh, different and questions can be answered accordingly from our small business owners. We do have a few question and answer um, in the in the Q&A here. Um, I want to ask, we have a couple of um, what appears to be individual um uh, concerns or issues. So I'm just going to go through it. Um, now would be the time. If you do have a question for any one of our experts on this panel to type it into the question and answer section and we will do our best to get it answered for you. Um, I 
am going to go ahead and toss this one to Cindy Merzon at the Small Business Development Center. Um, if she's on the call, I think, yep, she's got her microphone on. Uh, I purchased my business on 11-1-2019. It had previously been in business 13 years. I'm a sole proprietor and have no employees. One independent contractor and tenants who pay rent for room space at my wellness center. My 2019 income on line 31 is only $350, but I've lost tenants due to COVID and need help with rent and utilities. I received $1,300 first round and I cannot figure out if I qualify for any more because of the need for calculations of payroll costs, which is $0. My most profitable month is January 2020, which would show my true profit capabilities. How do I apply for funding that will help me? Andy, this is Hi. a, a twisted <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, so basically yeah, you did receive the first round of PPP. So you, it appears based on what you've written here, you are eligible for a second round PPP because you can probably show the 25% decrease in gross receipts, okay? Um, you cannot count the independent contractor because the independent contractor can apply for their own PPP loan. And if you let your independent contractor know or your tenants know that uh, they can apply for PPP, they can make those rent payments to you, thus taking care of those rent expenses. Um, so you will need to show, of course, a net profit on whatever information you're showing uh, for that second draw. Because if you show zero um, <clears throat> and you can, you can count yourself as a self-employee. So in that first round, what they did was they utilized your net profit and they then utilized the factor to come up with the amount to fund to you. So that's going to be the same thing for your second draw. So whatever documentation you provide to the PPP lender, um, they're going to make, you're going to make that calculation based off of that information. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another twisted one. So Andy, you may want to stay on the call here. Uh, I am a sole proprietor, self-employed individual with no employees. I've never applied for PPP before, so I assume I will be under the first draw consideration. My questions are, I am planning to do a PPP for owner's compensation draw. My question is, do I qualify under the eight week or 24 week consideration? And when I receive the funds, do I have to use it immediately or do I have 24 weeks to use the funds? Okay, yes. Yeah, you would definitely, if you didn't receive it in the first time around, you'll apply for the first draw consideration. Um, you would, again, based off of the calculations, and you'll see it on the loan application instructions, it'll tell you how to calculate it based off of you as a sole proprietor. Um, so typically it's going to be based off of your net profit um, and capped at $100,000. So if you're making over 100, gross profit is over $100,000, you have to reduce it down to $100,000 to do your monthly average factor and then multiply it by the 2.5, and then that will come up with it. So under the new Economic Aid Act, you, you can choose anywhere between eight and 24 weeks as your covered period. So your covered period is basically the time frame that you're gonna be able to utilize the funds for either your compensation or your eligible business expenses. Great, thank you very much. And then we have a third question. If anyone else has a question, now would be the time to type it into chat. We're um, starting to finish up our Q&A part. Uh, third question is, if we did not apply for the first round, can we apply for this current round? From my understanding, the answer is no. Um, yes, you can. Uh, so it, it allowed the opportunity for those businesses that did not receive a PPP loan prior to August the 9th, 2020, you can apply this time around under the Economic Aid Act as a first round draw application. Excellent. Um, I think we've got all of our Q&A answered at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. And I just want to thank our partners, the Small Business Development Center, the City of Salinas, uh, the SBA, and the County of Monterey. Again, many thanks to Luis Alvarez of Alvarez Technology Group. Um, also, thank you to Cindy Merzon, the Director of Cal Coastal Small Business Development Center, for being on the call today. Uh, Andy Sito, our local expert uh, and lender relations specialist at the U.S. Small Business Administration. 
Bill Tebby, Senior Vice President, Relationship Manager at Bank of America, and Jennifer Kuiper, the Senior VP and Senior Relationship Manager at Pacific Valley Bank. Just as a final reminder to our viewers, we are also recording this webinar and we'll send you a link with the recording so you can review today's program. We'll also send out links um, that were on the SBA presentation so that you can easily find those and click on them. Um, and we will also send out the contact information for the offices of our speakers today. Thanks so much for joining us today and we hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.